Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's go over stateless widgets. So we talked about the difference between a stateless and stateful widget. Stateless, stateless widgets are a little bit easier to review. The reason behind that is because it doesn't depend upon anything, right? So we don't need a memory of previous activities and we don't really need to depend upon other widgets as well. So we, what we could do is just go ahead and create the widget. So we'll, what we'll do is say, class something, put it right inside here, extends stateless widget. And this will be again our root widget itself. In this particular widget, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So we don't actually need a constructor, but I'm going to put one anyway, just to show the syntax. I, I got to be honest, there's a curly brackets here. I don't know what those are actually for. I couldn't couldn't find them anywhere itself. So it's just we have this um, inside of here, and then we're going to initialize with the, the super class. What is this key? Okay, what, what is the type key? Uh, whoops. Uh, what is that type? Well, key is similar to build context in the sense that it's not the same, but in the sense that number one, I don't exactly know where what we're going to use it for. But what it does is it contains information about this particular thing. So this is going to contain, contain information about the uh, um, widget right here. And this is going to contain the information, the build context, the build. And we'll talk about that in just a couple of seconds here. And it contains information that we pass down into the child widgets in the future. What's important with um, Flutter is that you have to understand not just your widget, but everything that happens and the relationship. Okay, because it's very easy to put something on the screen right here. Big deal. Now, how this interacts with this, 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 how this interacts with this, that's a big deal altogether, right? So, Because that's, that's what all the applications are. So having some information built in to pass down is important. And so that's why the same thing with um, context from the build context, you pass down information and you may or may not use it. And here again, we're not going to use anything like that. There's nothing down here. But in other future applications, when you're going to interact with other widgets, you will need them. Okay. So for right now, let's put it on hold. That's all it really is containing information to use down the line. Um, and then we're going to have this at override and you probably already know this is an annotation. Um, annotations, we're going to use at override a lot because we're going to um, have super classes a lot. You use override anytime you're going to um, uh, extend or implement a super class. You want to use the override if you're going to use one of their the super classes methods. The reason behind that is anytime you don't control the super class itself, so we have an abstract class here, and it, whenever you don't control it, so it's a part of some framework, somebody else built it, and you're not actually developing for it, <clears throat> because you don't have control of it, you want to use the at override. And in this particular context, what it actually does is that when you compile the program, if there's a problem, for example, um, uh, the build method is removed from the stateless widget. I'm not saying it will be. I'm just saying that in the worst case scenario, what if it is? Or what if you mistyped it or something like that? Then the at override, the compiler would say, wait a minute, the method that follows the at override doesn't actually exist. You better check your code. So if something goes wrong, you could see where the problem actually is. So it just helps you along the way good coding practices. So that's why we'll see at override an awful lot. Because it's going to, we know that because that's written there, the build method exists in the super class, and we're just going to utilize it and change it a little bit for our purposes. Now, um, so let's go over the build method. The, the big stateless widget methods here is going to be build um, method, and it's going to be create element also. So we'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes here as well. So build um, type widget build. So anytime you have a stateless widget, you're going to want to build a widget. Okay, so if it's type widget, you're going to want to return a widget, right? So, so far, so good, right? We got build. We take this and we build and we return a particular widget. Now, we're going to use a widget, which are pre-built widgets, to make the widget that we want to actually create. All right, so we're using widgets upon widgets to create things itself. For the longest time, I've been trying to figure out how to actually um, go over this. But what I'm going to probably have to do is just go over a lot of these types of widgets and just go through them. So here is the widget, and here are the properties. And this is the syntax, okay? Title, Flutter, 
I'm going to comment all this out and say home. And this is going to be a widget. Why? Uh, we'll go over that in the future, but you just have to go over the documentation. It's not something intuitive or anything like that, at least not to me. I'm going to have a banner widget for this is going to be the home. And it's going to say message, hello world, and location, banner, location. Hang on a second. And uh, location is banner, location, dot, bottom, start. Again, you got to go through the documentation. That's part of the frustrating part behind this. There's so many different widgets are, are, that are out there that you just have to go over one and the other. And eventually, with time, we'll get experience and, and understand this a little bit better. But again, I want to focus more on the syntax. So we'll return this widget, which has another widget right inside of here. But these are all stateless widgets. So it should build immediately. And if we run it, which I already did, location, banner location, bottom start right here. And it's going to say, hello world. I hope you can see that. It's a little bit small right inside of here. F title flutter. If you click here, that's the title right there. We could change this to flutter app if you want to either run it or hot reload. And it'll be flutter app right inside of here. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Stateless widget, super class. If you want to instantiate anything, just like we, I'm sorry, constructor, if you want to instantiate anything like we have in the past, um, at override, build, return the widget. We would build a widget in and of itself. And it, but, and you build it by returning this ma new material app, which is a, just a type of widget in and of itself. Right here, it's pretty blank. There's not, not much going on. Um, but again, we'll go more, over more in the future. There's lastly here, create element. Okay, now what's an element? Okay, so when we talk about widgets, we talk about this thing, this thing, we talk about things on the screen. But that's not how actually Flutter sees things. Flutter sees things as in terms of not just the thing, not just the object on the screen, but the relationship on the screen in and of itself. So for example, you have a the root um, widget, then you have uh, like uh, wi widget, let's just call you, call you W1, W widget 2. And these are all connecting into the root widget itself. But widget 1 and widget 2 might actually be the same widget it's just presented in different ways. All right, so you, you could have, when you use get a widget, you instantiate it on the screen by itself. So if you instantiate a widget right inside here in different areas, you create different elements. So you can have the same widget instantiated differently here, and those would be the elements. So it's more of a relationship. Um, uh, uh, the element is more of a relationship when they say in the documentations, um, it's the instantiation of a widget itself. It's the you're, you're talking about the thing on the screen, but how it relates to the others widgets themselves and the other elements. OK, I think it'll be more clear when we go over some examples. I got to be honest, it's not super clear in my mind at this point in time, just because we don't have examples to make it more concrete but that's part of the learning process. Okay, so let's keep going forward. Thanks a lot.